Chrissy. Hello. <laughs> How are you guys? I thought you were the first person who were actually who's going. We've got our first person. And it's, it's... No, it's just the person that actually lives here, but he's still really interested to make sure that other people know how amazing this place is to live as well. So, proper introduction, Chrissy McBain, the federal member for Eden Monero. Um, uh, Christy and I like talking politics from time to time, but that's not what we're here about to, today. Christy, are you a sea changer or are you a born and bred big, of, you know, no, Sapphire Coast? No, no, not, not born and bred at all. Like 90% um, of the population in Marimbula, I'm Victorian. Um, no, my, my parents moved us here when I was uh, nearly 12. Um, so I did one term of primary school here and then my high school here. So my parents... Um, Bought a small business in Marimbula, uh, moved the whole family up here, and um, you know I loved growing up here. I, I left uh, like a lot of people, uh, you know, did uni and, and started my career elsewhere, uh, and then I got married and uh, we were talking about having kids, and this is the place I wanted them to grow up because um, we had a great time growing up here. So. We came back. So some of the original sea changes now, of course, you're only like about 27, I think, you know, not very, you know, because I know it's it, something like that. But what sort of business did your parents start up? Uh, my parents um, purchased a shoe store uh, and changed it into a sports store. Um, that had been my mum's background for a long time in the Latrobe Valley. She'd worked in uh, retail her whole life. Her, she uh, didn't finish high school, uh, had worked in retail her whole life and had always had that dream of owning her own business. And um, uh, mum was able to do that. Um, my dad was a coal miner in uh, at Loyang, like so many other people, um, and had a redundancy package in 93, 94. So uh, they chose to, to make the big move to New South Wales and and chase that dream and and that is a, that whole concept of chasing a dream one of the biggest issues I think people raise is what am I going to do for work and a lot of people go I'm going to take the risk to start our own business that's what my husband and I did we, yeah. we were corporate execs in Sydney we wanted to get out of the rat race and we came to Marimbula and found a block of land went that's good let's build a house oh my goodness, what are we going to do? Yep. And we went, we'll buy a business. And um, we used the skills that we had to move into real estate. And, and we didn't know anything about real estate before we came to Marimbula, but we, were, we, we then built one of the, probably the biggest real estate group over the last 20 years in South East New South Wales. That's not about making me feel good. It's about the risks maybe that um, are attached to starting a business. What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, look, I think that there are, there's definitely a lot of people who think that's it, this is my time, I'm going to, to open that business or go out on my own. You know, we've seen over the last little while a lot of professionals who have thought, uh, I can do my job from anywhere, um, who have moved to the area and are working in co-working spaces or working from home offices. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that have, you know, taken the leap um, uh, whether that be as a sole trader, uh, a, a retail front-facing business, a service business, um, and you know there are opportunities for businesses that are already here. You know, I there's not a, a day that goes by where people aren't saying to me, "We are crying out for staff." So, um, you know, I, I think that there is a, a myriad of opportunities, whether they be at that uh, entry-level job uh, all the way to that professional job uh, right across the coast. Yeah, which is about taking the leap as well and sometimes it's scary to take a leap but once you do it you get the the, the value and benefit from it you've got a young family um, that's another big question for, for people is surely the educational opportunities aren't anything close to you know the, the cities what's your view on that it is really funny because people ask me all the time about where I went to school. Um, I went to Marimbula Public School and then to, to Eden Marine High School. Um, you know, the opportunities that I was given there were, you know, the same as a lot of other kids right across the, the state of New South Wales. You know, there are... Um, you know, some amazing graduates that have come out of Eden High, you know, uh, you know, one of my local GPs. Uh, you've, we've got a, a bunch of small business owners. 
uh, you know, we've got people that are uh, highly skilled engineers, um, you know, there is a, a, a guy that's working in NASA. So, you know, there are opportunities right across the coast in both public and private education. Um, I think the, the bonus that we have in, in communities like this is that people are really invested in uh, people doing well. Um, and, you know, I can't get to everything, but this uh, small community makes sure that uh, if I or my husband can't get there, that my kids still get that opportunity because, you know, we all look out for each other. You know, I remember a, a situation where um, I didn't get to the bus stop in time and another mum yep. kindly waited with my kids until I got there. Uh, another time there was no adult at the bus stop and the bus driver got the company to ring through and say, you on your way. So this is small communities looking out for each other. It, uh, yeah, it, it is. And I think for working mums particularly, that whole, what do you do um, with childcare in school holidays, there's a lot of people down here um, who don't have family support yes. and everybody goes, I can't make a sea change because grandma and granddad aren't around or, or the aunts and uncles aren't, aren't around. What we have here, and my kids are at the other end, I'm at the end of high school, you know, early adulthood now. and. That whole school holiday dilemma, you build this amazing community network, usually of other mums, yes. that basically work it out so that they can all look after each other. It's like, you know, what's the, that saying about... Um, takes the, a village. It takes a village. It takes a right. village to raise a child. And that is, is literally the motto uh, in towns like this, where I know that uh, I'm, I, I, I'm not the, uh, don't have the ability to be home five days uh, a week during the school holidays but uh, I have got friends and, and kind offers from a lot of people and I return the favour whenever I can and that's um, you know the ability of small towns to actually work together to make sure that you know everyone gets a a good holiday experience. Now you went away, you studied law, you, law you're a solicitor by pr profession. That's the other concern for people. We might get them through high school, but then all the kids will leave. What are the post-school opportunities for young people? So post-school, um, it's changed quite significantly since when I finished high school. Uh, we now have um, fabulous TAFE opportunities in Bega uh, and also TAFE campuses in Maruya and Cooma and Canberra, which uh, is a drive but not far from here. Uh, we also have University of Wollongong operating in Bega. Um, they operate um, and offering a number of courses and hope, hoping to increase that range. Um, but, you know, there some kids do want to go away some kids do want to experience what else is out there and that's not a bad thing you know I was one of those kids who couldn't wait to get out of here I was like that's it I'm I'm 18 I'm on the road I'm done um, and then I got to an age where I was like I want to come home yeah. this is where I see myself living uh, for the rest of my life and those opportunities are all available you know there are uh, apprenticeships um, uh, galore because uh, my husband works in the trade and you know trying to get uh, skilled tradespeople or apprentices is always um, always a challenge so you know those opportunities exist for the kids that don't want to be at uh, you know university um, as I said there are career opportunities uh, in a number of areas you know we've got one of the biggest hospitals um, in the region uh, you know council opportunities there are state government agencies here um, you know I actually met I met a, uh, a young man yesterday, I was on a, doing a hike and um, we weren't quite sure of where to go and just as we were about to start off, National Parks and Wildlife Service just rock up to this car park and we went, excellent, they'll know which way to go and out pops this, I mean he looked 19 and I thought, how did you nail a job in National Parks? That's been my dream job my entire life and he said, after the fires, they, there was 120 um, field officer positions yep. opened up for school leavers, and he nailed one. Yep. And he was 
living his dream. My son was a, as an apprentice, but he then became a snowboard instructor and he's next Thursday he's flying to the US with a, a Paralympian to, to work with a Paralympian group, um, a, a competitive group over there. So um, lots of opportunities for kids. I think that's the important thing too. I mean, a lot of people think, you know, I'm coming to a coastal town and there's, there's not much opportunity. You know, very few places across the world can you have your feet uh, in the sea in the morning and be at the top of our highest peak in the afternoon. I mean, uh, our snow fields are, you know, just over two hours away from us and a uh, pretty easy drive. Um, so, yeah, you know, I do it every second week. Yeah, so. The capital of Australia is three hours uh, from us. We're spot bang in the middle of uh, Melbourne and Sydney. You know, there, there are plenty of opportunities uh, and with the airport being in Marimbula too, it makes it very, very easy. Yeah, uh, that's how I started um, my commute when we were down here. I yep. was flying flying down and going back to my Sydney Sydney job. You can't, I mean, I know you've got a million things to do, probably enjoying the very, very few um, moments you have with your family before a, a federal election, so I'm going to have to segue to that. <laughs> before we go to the election though, what what's the federal government currently doing to actually support regional infrastructure particularly and um, for this region um, for anybody who might have concerns about whether or not facilities are going to be here what's your your thoughts on that yeah well um, Eden Monero is the bellwether seat uh, which <laughs> usually which means we get pork barreled every three years it's great <laughs> <laughs> sorry that's naughty <laughs> usually determines uh, who uh, you know who holds government I'm in opposition at the moment uh, look I've been heavily campaigning uh, the current government and my own party about a number of infrastructure projects uh, following on from bushfires, obviously, uh, there are a number of, of issues that we've encountered and mobile phone black spots is one of the biggest ones. Um, so we need to make sure that we are heavily pu pushing on that because, you know, that also impacts business uh, growth and development. So uh, mobile phone uh, coverage and reception is a huge one for us. Uh, in Parliament, I'm on the Regional Australia Committee um, and it, it has always struck me as weird that we actually don't have a plan for regional development, uh, not one where we see in the structure rolled out um, for a planned purpose rather than an uh, election purpose. So um, that's my very I'm, diplomatic. Very diplomatic. <laughs> it's one I'm heavily pushing on because I think that would also give um, a real clear signal to to business of uh, infrastructure investment coming to regions, and then they then may be able to create their own investment in those regions. Mm. regions based off that infrastructure so um, I'm heavily pushing on making sure that that is uh, something that is um, accepted by both major parties uh, so that we can then actually have a, a planned rollout of infrastructure Such in the regions. What about other concerns that people who are moving here might have about moving from a big city to here? You know, and I'm talking in terms of the political sphere of things that you, you may have some influence over. Yeah, look, I think in general, um, we try to be very apolitical in regions um, because we all want to be actually doing the right things to to um, cater for our communities, and I'm not saying that uh, for. But we also an live together. You know, That's no. exactly I mean, the right. Thing is, in small I towns, might, yeah, I might not have your politics, yeah. but I'm going to see you in Woolies. Yeah, yeah. In small towns, um, we we do our very best to make sure that we're catering for a wide range of people and that means listening and um, for me it's it's a lot of listening at the moment because as I said we've been through a pretty, pretty tough time over the last couple of years and uh, making sure that any policies that are implemented or any promises that are made in an election actually helps people. Okay and I'm getting the wind up over here but one last question so what's your take on when the election's going to be? Are we looking at May? Oh yeah I definitely think May. I definitely think it'll probably be the last possible date which is the 21st of May, so I'm going to put a whole dollar on that. <laughs> okay, all right. And, Super confident. <laughs> and a state by-election as well coming up in, in three weeks' yeah. time and, and with uh, Andrew Constance, who's the, the state minister, taking a tilt for, you know, tilt into into the feds. So you might, you never know, you might or might not see him there. I may, may or may not. All right, I'm being wound up. Lovely seeing you. Thank you very no much. Worries. Have fun.